Hi everyone. Today I have a very important subject that um, this may be one of the most important videos that you'll ever see in your business future. But there's a mistake going on about a well, uh, well-termed phrase um, that was said by Jim Rohn, that you become most like the five people you surround yourself with. And I wanted to bring some truth to this and a different understanding of it so that you can reach your highest success. And so uh, I'm Shauna Yao, CEO and business strategist at TotalGenius.net, where I help you transform your expertise and life experience into a brand story that connects and sells. And so just as I said in the beginning, Jim Rohn once said, you become most like the five people you surround yourself with most. Is that really true? Because if that were true, uh, thank God it's not completely. Uh, you know, God, I would, I would be like my last boss in my, one of my jobs who was just not a nice person. Um, I would be like uh, some people who, you know, maybe are lazy. And so I think that there is a, another part to this phrase. And that is, you don't become like the five people you surround yourself with most. You actually, uh, if you choose, you can become most like in the people you choose to be influenced by the most. Do you see what I did there? There's a slight difference because one of them involves um, a choice. And one of them is just putting yourself somewhere and not doing anything. And therein lies uh, the somewhat uh, tragedy of experience that happens when people go on Facebook or join Facebook groups, is that um, many people think that, oh, well, this must be a group of higher level people. I can surround myself with them and, um, and then now I'm on my entrepreneurial path which is great if you are just beginning. But as you grow, and if you are somebody who has a past, like you're, you're, you have some sort of expertise, you have a talent, you have a certification, um, then you fall into these groups and being on Facebook and you thinking that you are gonna become most like those people. And there's some actions that are uh, missing and some uh, identifying who those five people are that you choose to be influenced by. You know, I, I think everybody can agree that you don't wanna just be influenced by anybody. And so it actually has to be a choice. You know, there's so much distraction going on. We, as humans, there's 11 million bits of information going on at any given time. And we as humans can only recognize 40, 40. And that means that you really need to choose what you surround yourself with so that you can choose what to be influenced by. So I'm gonna tell you five people, the five people that should be the most important people in your life and how to identify them. And I'm gonna equate this to um, something that, that everybody may relate to and that would be like a cheerleading squad so if you're a male you know bear with me but I'm sure you can understand this so with a cheerleading squad there's about five people in it first of all there's you you are actually the cheer captain you are leading your own team and so you have to be responsible for the people that surround yourself. Just like I said, you know, you're gonna choose the people that you are influenced by. So, that being said, uh, you as the captain have to lead with the right moves. You have to know the right things to say and when to say them. And you have to um, connect to the right people and fill your team with the right people. The second person is probably like your best friend. You know, that's your BFF, you know, the person who cheers you on, you know, this is like your cheer friend who supports you and 
when you're down, they're like, it's okay, everything's gonna be okay. As a business person or just as a person, this might be your mom, you know? She's the first to sign up for your, uh, for your um, email list. She, she tells you everything's gonna be okay, even when um, it seems like it's not. And so this person is just the positive person that says, you know, let's go, we can do this, even when times uh, seem down. Then there is um, the know-it-all. Okay, I'm sure that you guys all have met the know-it-all. And these all can be the same person, I'm gonna say. But they, they, uh, and on your cheer squad, they could be different people. So the know-it-all gives you this information, you know, just when you think that cheer is perfect and you've done all the right moves, they're like, uh, wait, <laughs> you're missing that, or point your toe, or um, you need this slight twist in your strategy so that you can actually connect to the right clients. The know-it-all is kind of like that annoying um, thing on your shoulder that's telling you to course correct. That if you really want to get the best results, that you have to, um, you have to really up level a little bit. The know it, the know it all can kind of be annoying, but the truth is, is that they, they speak the truth. So they probably specialize in technology. They may, um, you know, be specializing in the things that you're not so good at. So I know a lot of people I know, and me myself, like I'm very creative. I'm a writer, you know, I'm a big thinker, I'm a strategy person. And so the tiny details, uh, I, I have a very difficult time focusing on them. And so um, the know-it-all is a very important person in my life because this person can help me get down to those tiny details and make sure that I'm up leveling. Then there's the popular girl. You know the popular girl. The one who always like looks amazing, um, always like has it together. Uh, online as a business person, this person has like a million followers. Uh, she or he speaks and people are like uh, clamoring. The know-it-all, I mean, the popular girl probably makes a lot of money and she wins friends easily and everybody wants to be like her. The interesting thing about the popular girl is that um, while this person is very important in your life, um, you may not want to be very good friends with her because she's popular for a reason. She has her or his own best interest in mind, not necessarily yours. So when you take in information from the popular person, you have to really understand, you know, what is, what is their motivation? You should ask that with everybody you meet. What is their motivation? Do they really want to see my life better? Or um, are they trying to make their life better and uh, I'm just a part of that, you know, to up-level them? There's a, that slightest bit of difference could be the determiner of how high you go and um, the trust that you have within yourself. You know, because the last person who is your mentor or coach, you know, all cheer squads have a person who, you know, helps them up level to get them into the competitions and to help them win. That person could be, you know, a coach you hire or somebody that you choose to have a, to be your mentor. Like my mentor, uh, he's not even in the same industry. He's an entrepreneur, but he's, he, you know, he rescues animals and he has his own business and I learned a lot about business from him. But I also learn a lot about having integrity and um, just the type of person that I want to be. So whoever it is, you know, whether it's a hired coach or a mentor or somebody you, who, who has your best interest in mind, this person is actually not necessarily, um, you know, your cheer friend. This person, you really, you know, they, they, they love you and you love them, but they push you and they make you grow. 
sometimes, you know, your mentor may seem like they're kind of mean because what a good mentor or a good coach does is that they make you grow. A good mentor or coach has your best interest in mind before they have their own best interest in mind. They're not trying to like lessen the time that they spend with you. They are actually trying to do the things that they, they see, think are necessary and tell you the things so that you will grow. I mean, to me, that's what I want in a good mentor or coach. I don't want somebody who's hands off, who is, is just there, you know, um, in for, you know, the five sessions that I hired them for. That's not a good mentor or coach. A good mentor or coach is leading you to push past your limitations, whatever those are, whether it's something, you know, a self-confidence or if it's something that, um, you know, that you need to know strategically. They, they are the example of the way that, you know, you want to be. And not necessarily, you know, you don't have to be doing the same things that they're doing, but they should be um, helping you become the person that you're meant to be, not to follow them. And so all those five people, you, the captain, your cheer friend, the know-it-all, um, the popular girl, and your mentor and or coach. Those people are the five people you should choose to surround yourself with, to be influenced by and lead you, support you, and that those are the people that you want to become most like. Not random people that are just in a big group. You know, social media and those things are great. And yes, you know, network, be out there, be social. But when, when it comes down to um, achieving your own personal success and understanding, you know, having clarity of purpose, every action that you do and everything that, that happens in your business, you should have clear, intentional focus on. You should understand why you're doing it, how you're supposed to do it, and then go do it. And all those people are essential to supporting you through the failures, through the wins, through the growth, and to lead you to your next level. And when you realize that everything you do, every place you are, every action you take is a choice, there is a whole new freedom and clarity that happens. Even if you don't actually, actually know what it is that, that, that you need to do, you become clear on what it is you're trying to achieve. And then you're clear on who to surround yourself with. So just remember you have a choice. And um, on that note, you know, I did a, uh, a class yesterday and the replay is up for a very limited time. Um, it'll be up um, probably just for uh, a couple of days. And it's at, 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 it's to master your money code. And it's six actual steps, not steps that I did, not steps that some random person did. It's six actual foundational things that you can do in your business to help you identify and achieve and master your own money code. So if you missed that yesterday, it's at mymc-webinar.totalgenius.net. There's a link at the bottom of this post. I would appreciate it if you would share this post with anyone. You can just go down, I think, at the bottom of, uh, of, of your comment section and you can just press the share button. Because I think that once everybody realizes that the freedom you're seeking is, is all um, a matter of your choice and that success and, and attracting the clients that you love, who want to pay you, who see your value are all part of the choices you make about who you're influenced by and then the actions that you take. 
So I encourage you to write the class, I mean, to, uh, to watch the class. And then um, if you missed it, I just launched my new uh, program that starts October 25th, which is uh, not this next week, but the week after. Uh, it's Master Your Money Code 3.0. And this is a kind of a business breakthrough. Um, I know that people have gone th that have gone through it before, uh, really made great changes in their business. And what it does is it pulls you away from the general um, uh, community, social, in, uh, you know, that you find online, and surrounds you with people who are going through the exact same experience as you. And Master Your Money Code 3.0 is up leveled from the previous years because this year it's going to be focused on actually creating your marketing strategy and getting you clients. So, you know, this is about creating the solid foundation in your business and really developing it towards your own focus. You know, build a list and all of that, they all have a purpose. But if you don't have the, an end goal and understand how it plays and flows into the rest of your business, then you don't have a marketing strategy. You just have tactical pieces that are random and, and they're not producing the result that you want. And so this is really about helping you understand your own path to success. You can follow whoever you want you can you know download the next freebie opt-in all your life but really truly having business success is about understanding and maximizing the things that are already inside of you yes you know learn the tactical elements you can even go and learn them for free there's so much information out there you know lead pages teaches like a whole Facebook course <laughs> for free I mean, you have to join lead pages, I think. But everybody, there's so much free information out there. If you're only, if you're paying for tactical things, then you're, you're paying for something that is just at the touch of your fingers. I, I hear so many business people that have spent so much money on their business. And to me, that's a shame. You're spending your life savings and half the stuff you don't even need to know. And so... Whatever you do in your future, just understand that the goal is not to learn as much as you can learn. It's about learning what you need to learn and then practicing it and doing it and being it in your business so that you can become the person you're meant to be. Uh, I think it was Albert Einstein or somebody said this quote and it was, uh, if you put a fish, uh, if, you ha if you make a fish climb a tree, it will think it's a failure, which is what I see many people doing. You're like a fish and you go and you, you are trying to climb a tree, but if that's not the right environment to help you grow or it's leading you down a different path, I don't care what you do, but uh, a fish will never climb a tree. And why should you feel stupid when you're actually probably really smart? So, you know, just know that our brains are designed to keep us safe and comfort zones are a very dangerous place to be. That means that you're not growing, you're not challenging yourself, and it's part of the human condition to actually grow. You know, um, if you're not growing, you're actually dying, <laughs> which is a really scary thing. And so, you know, um, it's all great and you know to be all happy and woohoo everything's great but if it's not great or if you're feeling uh, not challenged and you're not getting the results that you want you need to make the choices I talked about earlier and and choose who you get influenced by and choose you know the five people you surround yourself with most and then understand that the goal is not to, um, you know, be so good in your business that, that you know, you, you, you're like, you know, making $10 million. That can happen, but the goal in life is to become the person you're meant to be. Because then you will achieve your highest success. 
So I have one thing I want you to do, and you can write it below in the comments later, um, but I, I'd like for you to do this even just if you do this for yourself. But I want you to picture the end of your life. And I want you to imagine, you know, if, you, if your life were, if you had a year left in your life, or your life were to end, what do you want people to say about you? What do you think they would say about you now? And how far are you from achieving what you want them to say about you? Because when I die, I don't want people to be at my funeral saying, and she made $5 million. I don't want people saying that about me. I want people saying, wow, she really impacted a lot of lives. Wow, she really like lived her truth. Sometimes, you know, she just seemed like she was like so, like the most unpopular person out there. But she really uh, tried to help people. And that's what I want people to say about me. You know, she lived her life with high integrity and she tried to help people. What do you want people to say about you? What do you want to remember about your life? And then plan backwards because that life is going on right now, today. Whatever you did today, you know, I hope you spent time with family or, you know, you did something, um, uh, as, I, as, I, as I told someone the other day, you know, it's a worthy goal. You don't, your worthy goal is not just your end goal. Your worthy goal is just, you know, how you live every day. And so how you spend your days is how you spend your life. And so if your business is not feeding that worthy goal and making you feel amazing, doing the things that you're doing, if it's making you feel stupid, you know, in any actions you're taking, then something has gone wrong and you need to figure that out. And I guarantee you, when you identify those five people uh, that you surround yourself with, your life will become a lot more focused and you will have the clarity of purpose. So, you know, again, I invite you to share this with anyone and come join me at the Genius Collective. Check out my free class at the link below uh, before it expires. And uh, have a great night, everyone. See you later.